I am doing okay. <laughs> Just okay? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, awesome. You gonna ink that page? Yeah. I was sitting here for quite a while just looking over, should I start something new? Should I do something? I didn't know what to do. I'm like, you know what? I I, I, I really need to be working on this book. I got to get it done. So I'm like, all right, let's do this. I see. I mean, that looks really good. I had a lot of fun. I was kind of inspired in the moment. And so it was kind of flowing kind of well. So the faces are really good in this one. I know. I'm so good. <laughs> no, thank you. I appreciate it. I like it. I like it. I'm actually, not to be like weird here, but I'm actually changing my shirt because it is like ridiculously hot, I feel like, in this room, even though it's freezing outside. Well, you go ahead and change your shirt. We'll all just sit here and pretend like it's not happening. <laughs> um, and once again, it's not showing me. I know. That we're live. Or... So you got a joker. Yes. Um, so I decided I have a lot of joker paintings that I've done or artwork. And I decided... Yeah, for some reason, it never shows me that we're live. I have to wait, like, forever. For some reason. Oh, now it's, now it's showing. Okay, never mind. Um, but, and my downstairs, uh, my, like, basement has, hey, someone's saying, Rad Young. Yep, hey, guys. Um, I have this, just these walls that don't have anything on them and I thought I'll just put I'm gonna do a, like a like a Batman slash mostly Joker's face yeah and this is one that I'm redoing that I did many many years ago I actually worked with you at the time I was gonna say it looks familiar yeah and it's been lost to time but everybody loved it so I'm gonna try to do a better version of it since the other one is never like I mean I probably won't ever see it again so I think it ended up getting like damaged and uh the person who had it um like they had it out in storage and it got damaged anyways oh, oh, that sucks yeah so burned up in a house fire yeah pretty much I actually had somebody offer me for this this the original one not this one like yeah. 400 bucks, which at the time for me was a lot. That's a lot for me. I'd take 400 bucks. You bet your ass I would. Yeah, yeah. But it wasn't mine at the time. Oh. Oh, and yeah. I think we had this conversation. Yeah. But I was like, it's, that's pretty sick. Like, because somebody yeah. thought it was that good. Especially since I didn't really think it was very great at the time. Well, that was something like what? 14, 15 years ago or something like that. 13, 14 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. It's a long time. So that's what I'm doing. I thought I'm going to re-replicate this one that I did because I have a very grainy picture of the original. Yeah. Because cell phones were shit back then. And that's <laughs> all I had. And then I thought I will put it up with the rest of my other ones. Well, there and you go. Hey, uh, someone saying, I um, I kind of screwed up in that I should have waited and showed my son everyone's uh, artwork and and done like a video to show it to him fresh so I could make content with it. But uh, my boys were visiting me yesterday. I'm like, come here, son. Let me show you something. And I showed him quick pictures of everyone's drawing, and he for sure liked yours the best. Like he was just like. That's someone saying she did the other one. It's so good. It's perfect. Oh my God. <laughs> so creepy. He just lost it. The only other one that he thought was, he had something interesting to say was, well, he had two, as far as everyone else's, um, he was very excited about everyone's, but he loved the rat in yours, Jess. He, he really that. a little boys there. Like, I, you know, being a boy mom. <laughs> right. 
you know what the boys will like. And then um, the one from Dan Goodwin, where he actually drew the kid in a basement. You remember that one? Oh, yeah, that one was awesome. I it do. was really creepy. He's like, it's because it was, you know, the character's kind of hidden in shadow. So he's like, it's kind of hard to see the monster. But now that I see it, that's really scary. That's awesome, Daddy. I'm like, I know. He did really good. But yeah. again, someone saying, like, dude, he... My boy was all about yours. And honestly, like, so am I. <laughs> like, it looked really good. That's awesome. Yeah, and, that... now, and now your other son. Yeah, he's like, Daddy, I want, why was somebody drawing my monsters? Okay, like... but my kid said the same thing when I was showing it to him. He's like, what yeah. is that? When he saw that. So, I was like, yeah, what did your boy say? Like, you were just showing him the images and they're like, well, wait, I want to play. Well, it was setting up here on my desk, and they came in here to get something. Because this is my art studio, but then it's also their, their sister's room when she's here with us. Yeah. And so they came up to get something of hers, I think. Because I was like, hey, go grab something. And they came in here, and my oldest son, he comes out. He's like, what is that? And he, like, had the picture. And I said, oh. I, and I told him, I was like, you know Leo, right? Like, he doesn't know him, but you know what I mean? Yeah. He doesn't know him. And they've watched like the videos of um, that your sons have done. And he's like, I told him, explain what happened. I said, in here, look, like a lot of people did like way better stuff than that, like way cooler stuff. And he's like, well, that's super cool. I want somebody to draw my designs. I was like, I didn't really know you really were into drawing, but okay. <laughs> You're like, all right, kids. Uh, I didn't know this was a thing. Yeah, apparently, you know, it's like a thing with kids. I don't know. Anyway, yo, they thought it was super cool. They're like, whoa. Like, they couldn't believe all the artwork. They're like, are these professional artists? I was like, sure, yeah. Yeah, well, <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to do something for my younger boy. He's not going to let it go. I mean, he just, <laughs> he wants to be part of the group, and he likes to draw. And he's like, well, why does Leo get his monsters drawn? I draw, too. I'm like, I know, Bubba, but all right, we'll, we'll figure out something. I don't want to. I didn't want to like throw it out there immediately. Like, Hey, everybody, can we do another one to make my kid happy? And like, feel like I'm taking advantage of everyone's like goodwill. You know what I mean? I know that's probably stupid, but I wanted to space it out a little bit. <laughs> no, I mean, I would be down to do it for again. I think it's cool. Yeah. But I also told him like, well, you got to draw something. Cause he drew a picture of some other creature from one of his YouTube videos that I'm like, that's, you got to make, you got to make up your own. You can't just draw someone else's thing and then say all of us draw it. Mm, yeah. Yeah. So. And I, for some reason, I kept thinking he was the one originally that was more into the art, but maybe, maybe that's not the case. Well, they actually both are. Leo used to draw all the time and then he'd stop and then he'll pick it up and then he'll stop. But I think this type of stuff has got him like, using his imagination again and uh mm -hmm. all right someone saying i'll remember you said that you've committed yourself you're under contract now <laughs> said, i'll take your other son's image no but for real uh, yeah i'm gonna tell my boy i have him this weekend so i'm gonna see if i can get my younger boy andrew to draw something you know and then come up with an idea and then maybe i'll put it out there again for everybody if we want to do this again you know because i thought the whole group draw thing was fun as hell like that was yeah as I say even if it wasn't like somebody else's like one of your kids or something's drawing you could even we could even pick an image just to do everybody could do their own you know yeah every once in a while I mean that's I thought it was fun oh uh, yeah I had a lot of fun and with having the discord it's like super cool because everybody can upload even if they are like still working on them or yeah. whatnot when yeah. So I liked it a lot. It was so fun to see everyone's weird. Hello, Jonathan. Yeah. Hey, Jonathan. But to see everyone's interesting interpretations, I was like, look, Leo, the one Jessica did, gave her girl lips. He's like, I know. I thought that was really neat. It's kind of weird, but neat. I'm like, I know, that's <laughs> good for you. And then. Uh, what did you yeah. just say? Oh, yeah. No, no. You heard me. I know. I didn't hear you. And then I can't remember the name of the guy. I, 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 I'm, I'm really bad. But he, he drew almost like a cute one. Like it's just a guy. Oh, kind of, yeah, yeah. Do you just remember? Like simple, simple, like standing there with his arms to the side, a little shadow under it. I'm like, 
it's almost kind of cute, you know, and I like that about it. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that. That was, that was pretty cool. Getting to that inky. I'm still like grabbing paint out and stuff here. <laughs> so your husband's going to let you just make a whole Batman wall somewhere in that house, huh? Not let you, but I mean, like, it's kind of indifferent to it. Like, whatever, babe. Do whatever you got to do. I'll be honest with you. He doesn't care. <laughs> I'll give a fuck. He doesn't care about how the... How, like, he has, like, a few small... Like, he has his, like, office that he does the decorating out of. But I even bought a lot of stuff in there. Yeah. And then, yeah, he just doesn't... Eh, whatever. <laughs> right. He's like, do I have to do anything? No. Or then do what you want, babe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unless it's like cost him a lot of money or, you know, then he's kind of like, well, hold up. What are we okay, doing? Hold on. Hold on. Let's, let's, let's re, re, re evaluate what we're doing here. Yeah. 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 But other than that, no, he doesn't care at all. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So I think it'll be cool. Like I said, I, I mean, I could do it in here, but also that it's my daughter's room. I don't know that she really wants that. And she's got, she's got my art up, but she's got, like some of the cute animal ones I've done and some of the like Zentangle ink stuff I've done. So, yeah. So, uh, see, look, there's plenty of people who are like, yeah, let's do it. It was you, Mooperson. Weren't you the one who drew? We we're talking about that drawing of that, 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 the cute little version. Wasn't it you? Um, I think, I think it was. Yeah, yeah. Where it was just kind of standing there and not looking scary, just kind of like almost looked like, like a, some of Sesame Street. And I don't mean that in a negative way. It's just kind of like this, almost like a Muppet. And I loved it. You could be like, this could be a doll. Yeah. Like the nose was the belly button and had the mouth. And then like, it almost looked like the two nipples were the eyes. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Yeah. That one, I, I keep looking at it because again, I like the different interpretation, you know, and not everyone's doing the same thing. So I thought that was, that was brilliant. Yes. Yes. I remember that. I was like, oh, that's actually really cool for being yeah, like, yeah. Just, yeah, a little variety. Kind of remind me a little bit of like a Patrick Star almost. Oh, there, yeah, that, yeah, I can see that. How is, uh, how's your little baby? She's good. She's good. She kept me up all night last night. <laughs> You'll say you were, you had said that you were trying to do some artwork the other day, but you had to have your little one strapped to you because she wasn't having it with daddy or something. Oh yeah. She was, she just, she's kind of become a little bit of a mama's girl, which is funny because my last kid was definitely dad's. Oh, uh, I was talking yeah. to uh, uh, my friend Danielle today and, I was kind of telling her how you said that. And I was like, you know, with my two boys, we never had an instant, me and the ex-wife, where the uh, they'd only want mommy. You know what I mean? Like, I never experienced Oh, really? They, they were fine. In fact, I would submit it's even possible. It's been a while. But I'm like, they almost wanted me. If you had to put it on averages, they would maybe want me more than mommy sometimes. Mm. No, and I'm not saying that as a negative on their mommy by any means, but you know. No, I get what you're saying though. But I was really like, oh, I never had to go through that where I'm like, here, let me take care of you. And it's like, no, I don't want you. I want mommy. Never really experienced that. I mean, that's nice though. Yeah. I uh yeah, with my last with my uh two year old, he wanted daddy more, hands down. <laughs> Uh, only wanted me when he was hungry. <laughs> um, but I would say with my with my first one, he didn't care either way. It was fine with him. He's such a chill kid. And then, which sounds like similar to how your two were. Yeah. Um, and then my second son, I mean, he just, he wanted me only, really. He didn't ever want his dad, really. But yeah, kids are all different, man. They're crazy. Yeah, who knows? Maybe the next one will be daddy's girl. <laughs> next one of yours? 
yours. I'm like, <laughs> which I can't is the have joke. It I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh hell no, that's that was what it was. It is a done deal, folks. That is not happening. Shut down. <laughs> mm -hmm. As my sister would put it, she's like, yeah, I closed the factory. I left the playground, but I closed the factory. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> Dude, I've heard that before. Yeah. Heard people say stuff like that. It makes you crack up. That's that's kind of how it is. You're like, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, you're, you're right. I actually once heard someone say, <laughs> and we used to actually work with them. She would tell her husband it when it was that time of the month. The uh, what would how did she put it? The muse, the roller coasters coasters down, but the museum's still open or something like that. And I was like, <laughs> "What does that mean?" She's like, "Oh, there's just other ways of doing things. That's not the only ride." I was like, "What the? Oh my God. <laughs> Holy crap! Oh, that's awesome!" Yeah, I was laughing so hard. Like we could still go have fun. You just can't ride on this ride. Yep, pretty much. That's what she said. I was like, "Wow." Be like, "Oh, no way, gross." <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Look at you. Like you're seriously. Like I would be still working on like the first three lines, just scared to death. What comes inking? No fear. Just start inking. Just start throwing lines down. <sighs> that's what you say. It is what I say. I know it is. That's why I said that's what you say. Like, no, I can't. I get this, Rob. <laughs> I am just the worst when it comes to it. I actually feel like I've gotten somewhat better. I just need to practice more. You're just super good at it. I'm. I'm. I'm average. Okay. Yeah, well, you got guys like Mr. Chuck, who's, uh, you know, the real inker. And I'm like, oh, God, now we're kind of on friendly terms. And I'm like, oh, God, he's looking at what I do. I got to I gotta step up my game. <laughs> I got to represent the guy who's, like, actually done this and worked on, like, really good artists before. It. And, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, I'll work on one of yours. I'm like, oh, God, I got I to gotta try really hard now. A little intimidating. Cause I don't know if I mentioned it to you. He's uh he's actually helping me ink some of these pages. Are you there? Like, man, like I remember a lot of these and at the time, not that they're not still good. I was like, dude, he is, this is just prime work. Like you couldn't get better than this. And then here we are today and you definitely have, you know, stepped up your game. Hold on. You, are you, you blacked out. Did you get a message? Because you went silent and then you blacked out. Oh, can you see me now? No, not me. Not on my end. What the heck? Maybe I got a phone call and didn't realize it. Hmm. Okay, let me try to rejoin, I guess. All righty. Mm. Willistrator, greetings from Venezuela. Freelance comic artist sends greetings. I like the channel. Um, I've uh, seen you comment. Uh, thank you for uh, being here. Everyone's always welcome. There you are. Okay. Yeah, I must have gotten a phone call. I'm going to have to get a different camera of sorts i'd yeah. say because i have oh whoops i have this issue it seems like all the time yeah but anyway i was saying how um it's kind of intimidating that uh chuck is kind of looking at my stuff and he's uh gonna help me on some of these pages and then it kind of you you were saying something but it stopped so what, what were you you saying something oh i was just saying the other day i was looking through um your Instagram and I was going back kind of a ways through some of the other art. I was actually looking for some ideas. I thought maybe I'll do one of his today. Cause you know, I've done that before. Yeah. And uh, just try to like my own style on some of your stuff. And I was going back kind of ways that I just started like scrolling, looking on stuff. And 
a lot of it I recognized from, you know, like I remember you doing it and I'm like, oh, like that's so at the time I just thought you couldn't get any better than that. Like that's just way so good. So good. And not that it wasn't good, but now I look at you now and your stuff is, you know, you've definitely like stepped up your game. It's like surpasses even that stuff that at the time I thought you couldn't do any better than, you know? Oh. Well, thanks. That's nice to hear someone's actually legitimately like stalking me online. You know, I do. I, I didn't, but now I do. Every day, baby. I'm right. Just... Let's see what stupid shit he's doing now. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. But seriously, I, I, I was like, wow. Well, thanks. I appreciate it. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I'm going to pronounce this right, but I was going to say, hi, Will, you straighter? Will, Will is straighter. I thought it Will was. Straighter, yeah. The Uhante Comics. If I said that right, I probably just butchered it, but... What'd you say? The rest of his name listed there. Oh, oh, oh. I didn't even see that. I don't know why I didn't see that as part of the name for blind. Jessica. I know. <laughs> I really am just blind as a bat, apparently. Blind as a Batman. I was about to say the same uh, thing. Uh, okay, so I started watching your Howard the Duck video. <laughs> All right. And I don't know why, but when you're like, you were talking about the part where there's the big, I don't know, the moment where he shoots out of his house in his chair, right? Yeah. And you're like some type of earthquake. And John's like, is it an earthquake or an earthquake? And I started yeah. laughing so hard. <laughs> Do you really? <laughs> I really did. I was like, oh my gosh. I was like, this is like, that's the perfect pun for this movie. He was making duck puns the entire thing. Some of them didn't really work. But yeah, he's like, was it an earthquake or an earthquake? I'm like, oh, Johnny. <laughs> I know you just kind of like, oh, John. Oh, my God. I was seriously laughing my ass off at that moment. I was like, yep, this is going to be good. I haven't finished it, though, but no, I, I, yeah. I was laughing. We had a great time watching that, man. We uh, There's John. See, hey, he heard. <laughs> They all worked. No, John. They all, <laughs> but at least one of them made Jessica laugh out loud. So that's a victory. I, I did. Yeah. Oh man. Uh oh. Did you get another message? Uh no, I don't think so. Can you see me now? It, yeah, you're there, but it blacked out and kind of went goofy for just a minute. Maybe that's my internet. Uh -huh. I should switch it to my network and not be on my stupid internet because it is stormy here. So maybe it could be that, I guess. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. What's Daniel that? Moeller, Psychonaut Sessions. Yo, I don't know if I've seen you on here before. So welcome if. No. And um, the name that I can't pronounce because it's in I don't know what Russian, but will you invite Rob Liefeld for an interview in the future? Um, if I thought for a second he'd be interested, um, I would say hell yes, right? But I'd be a complete hypocrite because if I don't like tell him what I think about his artwork like I do on the videos, I would be a hypocritical sellout. And the well, you have to tell him, yes. But then the instant he, because what he would do is he'd go and research and see the videos I've done. And then as soon as he found out that I'm not kissing his dick, he would like be done instantly. <laughs> so. Yeah, probably true. I mean, probably. to be fair, there are questions I would actually really like to kind of ask him about stuff. But yeah, he won't. He would never want to talk to me. Never say never. I said never. But Justin Bieber says. Oh, God. If the day I take advice, <laughs> anything the Bieber says. Hey, you know what? Leave the Biebs alone. You would not be a fan of that guy. I'm not. Oh. 
I was too old for the Justin Bieber phase. That wave went right by you. Yeah. I thought he was a girl. I'm I not think he is. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, when I first heard that song, Baby, when he was like, you know, five years old or whatever, um, I for the longest time thought it was a girl, just like a, you know, female artist. Yeah. Someone told me, like, this is Justin Bieber. I was like, who the hell is that? And they said, they sing his song, Baby. I was like, oh my gosh, it's just a little kid. Like, what does he know of our relationships, anyways? I don't <laughs> Right? It's very, very strange. Daniel Muller says, Rob is kind of thin-skinned. I mean, you're right. Like, that is no joke. But he's been, uh, he's been, he's had the shit kicked out of him for so long. And I think he's just such a cantankerous old man anymore. I kind of don't blame him. <coughs> Excuse me. But, Yeah. Fair enough, I guess. It would be interesting to talk to him, but he would absolutely never. Yeah, that's fair. I suppose. <coughs> oh my God. Excuse me. Are you going to be okay over there? <coughs> What if I died on camera, like right here? Oh my gosh, that would be like you hear my <clears throat> my death rattle, like. <laughs> <laughs> hey, like Rob, is this a joke? <laughs> intermission. I am gonna have to get in the car. <laughs> no, because I think we just heard Rob die. Right. I'll let you all know in an hour or so. So, in like an hour, the live is still going. Nothing's going. <laughs> Dead quiet, and then it suddenly hears your piercing scream. <laughs> oh, that'd be great! I mean, like, if you had to die, that would yeah, be a like crazy. if you have to, this is how you should do it. Yeah, that would be a pretty crazy, hilarious, right? Honestly, my roommate would probably beat you home. Or oh, that's you, true, and then she would freak out. I thought you were gonna say, would probably beat you up. I was like, why? I didn't do it. Like, don't die. Like, somebody's got to pay rent in this place. <laughs> but yeah, that messed up to like kick the bucket right here. That'd be crazy. Right? Doing what you love, though, right? <coughs> this is not how I want to die, but if I have, <laughs> yes, it's okay. Oh, my brush is splitting, and I'm so annoyed right now. Is it an old shitty brush? <sighs> I mean, to be honest with you, it's not that old. I just am a shitty caretaker of my brush. Oh, oh. That's not okay. Okay. I don't need your judgment. I am full of judgment today. Yeah? Why is that? I don't know. I don't know. I just felt like judging someone today. Yeah. yeah. They actually let me out of work early today. So I'm like, I'm going to come home and do pro do productive things. And I came home and went right to bed. Nice. That's productive, though. You need rest. Everybody does. Yeah. I was like, you know what? I'm going to take a nap. It was great. I don't mind saying it was actually awesome. All right. Is it uh, snowing where you're at right now? I don't know if it's still snowing. Let me check. Freezing as hell is what it is. Yeah, it is cold. It is cold, but uh, it's actually stopped snowing, it looks like. so. How about you? Um, I know it's supposed to. And I'm being hyper careful to watch because my pipes can freeze in my place here really easy. Oh, uh, that happened to you last year, didn't it? It happened to the last two years, and it sucked so bad. Yeah, it's it's snowing, but um, it's it's. I went like almost a week without water. Damn. Like no showers, no laundry, no dishwasher, no bathroom. Well, if you need to, you can come here. Yeah, I'll drive an hour to go take a shit. Bitch, I'm trying to be nice. <laughs> You're like, fine. You like, you know what? Never mind. You can't. <laughs> 
<laughs> you actually can't come here now. Yeah. Like, I hope you have to go in your yard. Yeah. Take a <laughs> shit off your porch, the yeah. asshole. Right. But yeah, so me and the roommate are being hyper careful about, you know, if you leave like a faucet running a little bit to have flowing water, then your pipes won't freeze. Mm, that's a good idea. See, I wouldn't have ever, we had our pipes freeze a few times when I was growing up. I don't know if we ever thought about doing that. I didn't even know that was a thing until somebody else pointed it out. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think we ever like really. Yeah. <clears throat> but, uh. So yeah, I leave my, a little bit of a drip going on in my sink in my bathroom. I leave the kitchen sink running a little bit of a drip. And then the roommate leaves her bathroom mm -hmm. a little bit. And it, it eventually catches up with this, our, the rent I have to pay. If you pass a certain amount of water usage, you have to pay a little bit extra. It comes out to be about 30 bucks more a month, but I would rather pay that than not be able to have water. Yeah, no, that's just the worst and the next monday tuesday it's supposed to be horrifically cold like zero degrees i thought of where you're at i thought it was supposed to get um negative temperatures i saw one forecast for next tuesday about two days ago it said negative two degrees and then it updated the next day to like three degrees and i'm like all right message received cold <laughs> If anything's going to freeze, it'll be then if we're not really careful. So, yeah. So I was telling my other friend, Danielle, I'm like, hey, uh, if you get a call from me and my pipes are frozen, you got to let me come over. She's like, all right, you let me know. <laughs> all right. Thank you. The old freezy pipes. Oh, my God. It sucks. What are you going to do with this painting if someone else offers you 400 bucks for it? Mm, I mean, I would probably just sell it to them. I mean, I need $400 more than I need this painting, but. Let's say, if I had $400, I, I don't know if I can finish that sentence, truthfully. I don't know that I'd pay for that, but. Because um, I need $400. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I. This is actually something that I was saying to my friend the other day, and this is going to sound arrogant, but it's not because I actually don't think I'm that great of an artist. I just think that, you know, you see at like Target or you see at, I don't know, some of these places where they sell home decor, some of these paintings and stuff that they sell and they're like, oh, we want $150 for it. And I'm like, no way. I said, I will paint something similar to that. Yes. Because I need the money more than I, and you know, it might cost me. Yes. For the can, you know, I don't know. Really. If you buy them in bulk, canvas aren't that expensive. And then, you know, I've got paint. I'm like, I'm not going to blow my money on somebody's random printed canvas. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> The only uh, things I've bought for decorative decoration in my place are like photographs of like mountains and stuff like that that look really cool. I'm like, ah, oh, that looks amazing, and it's a photograph, not a piece of artwork, and I like that. So I got a couple photographs things. that what? I didn't hear what you said. They're photographs of like mountains and stuff like that. Like I wouldn't put art on my walls. I'll just put my own up, but I'll put up images. Like if I'm going to go buy something from a store. Right, yeah. Got okay. something that's a shot of them. Absolutely. Yeah. That's totally different, 100%. <laughs> but, like, if I got someone who's painted a big fucking rose on a canvas and they want $150 for it, and I'm like, that's not even a real painting, that's a print, I'm not going to sit there. Yeah. And... yeah. But, yeah, absolutely, photography is way different. I can't do that myself. I always like photography of cities, buildings and stuff, even even I don't like painting buildings or anything. Yeah, right. <laughs> I like the way that stuff looks. I guess I should take that back. I did buy a printed canvas 
of some artwork. But it was from my husband's office. He's really big into cycling. And it was just of a bicycle. And I'll be honest with you, I have no desire to sit and paint a bicycle. So, and it wasn't that expensive. <laughs> well, that's fair. Yes, yeah, so I guess I shouldn't act like I've never done that before. Hey, De La Cruz. How's it going, everybody? How come everyone's not out there watching the new Echo series on Marvel Disney Plus? Oh, I saw that. My kids were like, it's TVMA. It won't let us watch it. Oh, they got restrictions on... Like, yeah, we have one that's for us of the Disney. Yeah. And then one that's for them. <laughs> like, sorry, kids. Otherwise, I don't know that they wouldn't be out there watching. Is your little baby asleep right now? Uh, what's Chuck? What? Oh, inking tip. He's got an inking tip on here. Chuck Gibson. Did you see that? Am I behind? Did you already see that? No. Oh, yeah. It says wrap tape around the ti that tiny pen holder until it's a decent size and then slip one of those foam pencil cushions on it. I've, uh, I've seen a lot of artists holding these and have those things wrapped around. And I always wondered if it was just to um, just make comfort on their 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 hands to hold it because it is a pretty tiny thing and i've just never like tried to do it i've never thought about it but i've always like oh, i wonder what the advantage is if it's just to make the grip you know um easier to handle i bet it does i'm sure so i need to I'll, i need to do that could you get it done then please wow <laughs> Uh, someone saying that says I don't have Disney Plus. Um, haven't been able to see any of the Marvel or Star Wars series they've done. Um, that's probably a good thing. <laughs> probably for the best. Honestly, uh, if I didn't have kids, I probably wouldn't have Disney Plus either. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, I don't, I can't pronounce your name, and I'm not even gonna try. Um, but you said, are you planning to review comics from European artists such as Mobius, Milo, Minara? Yeah. Or is this Igor? Is that how it's pronounced? I'm not sure who that, that I know the other Baranko? two. Baranko? Yeah. Or Baranko, I mean. Yeah, um, I need to, I don't know that I have... I don't think I have anything from Mobius, so I'd have to seek some of that out. I need to. I'm aware of, you know, what he's done. And then Milo Manara, I I think I have one thing, but that's another thing I don't have a lot of. That's kind of the limitation of my stupid channel is that I can only, so far, just show what I've got. And, I, you know, I've got certain tastes and interests, and so it's a lot of samey, same stuff. So I'm having to, like, really factor in the idea of like all right i need to branch out and go get some new stuff to have a little bit of variety but if someone sends you some you'll review them right oh yeah you know and that's happened once or twice and i'm always extremely grateful in fact i just got a book in the mail from one of my buddies he sent me this scott mcleod novel like it's, it was a book like a comic graphic novel like this thick if you could like it's huge it was like this awesome, he's like, I'm sending you a Christmas gift. I'm like, oh shit, thank you. Like, that's awesome. And I'm like, oh my God, I've never even heard of this. And I just flipped through it. I'm like, all right, now I'm excited to see this. It's very different. And you said you just did a video on it? No, I didn't. Um, I just got it in the mail today. Oh, okay. What well, that's cool. I was like, what's this? Like, I got a package at my door. I'm like, what is this? I'm like, oh, right. He said he was sending me something. Um, What the hell? So I had no idea what it was. Right. And uh, I was like, oh, my God. Like, I'm sure it's an intentional thing on his part to like, I'm going to send you something different than anything you've ever looked at before to 
expand your horizons, Rob. <laughs> well, there you go. That's actually pretty badass. So it will definitely get a video treatment. I've actually got like three indie books I need to review for some people that are kind of waiting for me to like get to it. I've got to, let's see. Yeah. Someone saying says I haven't been able to see any of the Marvel or Star Wars stuff series that you've done. Yeah. Like you're saying, um, not a, not a big last Chuck saying it's comfort. It also provides better control, like a big old kindergarten pencil. Yeah. I, I think I'm going to go out and try and, um, do exactly that. I've never, like I said, I've always just held these stupid little things and watch it be like the magic trick that gives me the control that I want. I'm like, oh, that's just what I've been missing my entire life is a stupid, <laughs> that stupid thing. I'm too dumb to notice. Um, Igor Baranko is a talented Ukrainian artist. You should check him out. Um, check out his books. Or his books are very cool. All right, yeah, I will. Um, I will do some googling. Google it up. Dude, I'm super annoyed. I need to open another set of brushes, but now I'm lazy as well that this pencil or this brush is split so bad. Yeah, it sucks when you have that tool that's working really well and then something it dies on you. You're like, no. No. I have to try and break in a new one, and sometimes it just is never the same. Yep. But Chuck, I'm glad you're in here. Um, he says it helps more than you'd think. I do that with brushes too. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm kind of interested. I mean, like I said, I've never thought about it, but how can I take the advice of like a guy who's done it for real? Like the professional guy's like, here, try this, stupid. Oh my gosh. Right? <laughs> like, come on, man. You see the professionals do it. Why aren't you giving it a shot? It's true. Let your pride go, Rob. Right. Chuck's been, uh, like I said, was been helping me out on some of the pages, and I can't wait to see him. It's always like, oh, my God, oh, my God. I'm very excited. Oh, for or on uh, some of your comic book pages? Like yeah. For your, wow, that's awesome. I did not know that. At least I don't think I knew that. I literally said it earlier in the stream. I'm sorry. I'm the worst. <laughs> I'm going to chalk it up to I'm getting old and my hearing is bad. Wow. You are 14 years younger than me. I don't want to hear it. Mm, but what about, like, mentally? Where am I at? You're an old soul. I'm just fucking old. <laughs> you talking about how bad the... Um, style was in uh, the 70s. Me, I just sent my sister pictures of some bell bottoms I was gonna order. Right, <laughs> <laughs> Chuck says you act like she actually listens to you, Rob. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> hey, there's been a few times I've said something and they've had to call you out on it because, oh, yeah, blah 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 blah, blah all over it. Because I'm just so stuck on my own stupid ego. I'm not listening to you. <laughs> listening to myself. I know. It's okay. I love you anyways. You know, somebody has to. So how was your birthday? Wait, have we? We haven't done one since your birthday. Um, have we? No. No. Okay. Yeah. I had to stop it. Yeah. I was like, no, we haven't. <clears throat> It um it was actually really good, you know, because um, remember last year I wanted oh to get together gosh. with a bunch of people that and some of us like you got sick or some and you were vomiting and you couldn't make it. I think my whole I don't think I was sick. I think my kids were sick, to be fair, yeah. which I guess that's not the greatest excuse. But yeah, it was my kids, not me. But um <laughs> Well, I mean, I started out, I got this awesome email to start the day out. Thank you, Chuck. Like, literally set the tone for the day. I'm like, all right, the rest of the day is just going to be downhill from this. Mm -hmm. And then um, I just had a bunch of messages from people that I like. And uh, my brother came over and we recorded a bunch of stuff. You know, that Howard the Duck thing and a couple of videos and just bullshitted for a while. So it was fun to hang out with my brother. And then I went over to one of my other buddies' house. 
uh, later that night with his wife and kid and one of our other friends and made us steak dinner with the guy that had the Great Dane dog. Oh, yeah. That dog is awesome. It's the biggest fucking horse of a dog I've ever seen in my life. So, But awesome. Yeah. So all in all, it was actually pretty damn good. Um, I got good. zero complaints. So... And I got a lot of messages from uh, people from the channel. So everyone, so who, you know, everyone who kind of sent a message or a text or, you know, uh, you know, on the YouTube or the Instagram, like, thank you for everyone. I appreciate that a lot. Hmm. <laughs> That's awesome. I was going to say, I don't think I got a happy birthday from you though, did I? Me? <laughs> just kidding <laughs> I was like okay motherfucker I, it was like early in the day it was <laughs> and you actually sent a text because we usually just kind of communicate through uh, Instagram messenger but you actually sent an actual text by phone yeah I don't know why we don't text it's just always Instagram I guess kind of which is thing. fine but I was like oh I'm going to send him a text a happy birthday text yeah I know I'm just kidding I'm being a dick yeah shocker there Right. It's taking me like a long time to make this look like my original one. Like as far as the outline goes. And then I'm just thinking I'm just going to change up a, a lot of it. But So is it just the Joker going on here? Just like no other characters or anything? It's just a Joker. And it was like kind of done as like, I don't know if I can... I don't know if I can actually get a picture of this picture. It's pretty grainy and bad. But let me see. Don't judge my setup. It's judge. a mess. Oh, yeah. I remember. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't remember. I mean, I, I know where I got the reference. I mean, I don't know where the reference came from, but somebody gave me the reference. And I kind of did it similar, but then different. And then I, that's the only picture I've got of it. But, uh, yeah, that's the one. That's awesome. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to make another one just for fun. And this one's going to be better than the last one. Right? It's not going to be worth $400. It's going to be worth $4,000. The last one was not worth $400. But some people really like Joker stuff that's, or Batman anything that's unique and, I guess, one of a kind, like there's not a bunch of them, you know? Yeah. Like even I know that thing was not worth $400, but. Yeah, but it's worth whatever somebody is willing to pay. That's true. That's a fair point. Yeah. Right. Bill, people will literally shit on a canvas and people will buy it. Oh my gosh. All right. I remember reading how there was like some fine art thing where somebody took like a big cross, put it in like a big glass jar and then pissed in it, filled it up with this piss and then sold it. That was his artwork. I'm like, you know what? <laughs> That's fucked up. <laughs> but also one, I'm mad that you're selling a jar of your own piss being as sacrilegious as you could possibly try to be. And then somebody bought it. Honestly, though, he knew his clientele. Right. Jai Deep, Mr. J. Hey, everybody, he says. Good to see you. Up? Um, one interesting thing I feel about this Joker that I did is he has no color in his face. Like, he doesn't have any face paint or anything. Or makeup, I guess, not face paint. So is but like flesh tone. Yeah, but I mean, that the white, white and gray that I did, and I feel like with the Joker, one of my favorite things about him is he usually <laughs> has some type of ridiculous makeup on that I put on, but I didn't do anything like that here, so it's kind of not my normal thing. So I'm like looking at that, realizing that kind of interesting. So what are you gonna do on this new one? Are you gonna do it kind of the same? Um, I don't know yet. I don't know what should I do. Maybe I should ask everyone if I should leave it with a really pale face with no makeup or if I should give him some makeup. I 
Wow, you're already on to the second panel here. Well, I mean, I did 100% finish the other one, but when you use this pen, it leaves a lot of wet globs of ink that you got to work around. So I'm like, all right, I move from here to up to here. Right. I see what you're saying. <laughs> Chuck says, once in school, I painted a canvas completely pitch black and then squirted red paint in the middle in a violent burst. I titled it Pain and got a B on it from my grudging teacher. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that actually sounds interesting, though. Um, like a piece of graphic visual art. That sounds interesting. That's a thing, though. Like, that is a thing. People actually do. And to be fair... I've done similar stuff just for therapy. Some people like that stuff, you know? No, I've seen people do artwork where it's just like, I'm just splattering paint around or whatever. And it's more of a, an emotional expression as opposed to like trying to make some commercial stuff, you know? Right. <clears throat> Jay Deep, he's like, can't convince me Joker doesn't have superhuman durability. He's been taking hits from Batman that cripple every other henchman. Like, for real, that, that's one of those, like, <laughs> Batman universe things where you're like, Batman would have put that clown asshole down in two seconds, and one punch would have just ended everything. Okay, but they proved that people with some really serious psychological problems can actually have physical changes to their body that kind of gives them more strength or different bot like not superhuman but i guess um durability than what you like you and me might have they've actually done studies on it so you sound like crazy conspiracy nut oh <laughs> <laughs> no i'm for real are you for real that really is a thing <coughs> they did studies about all right i'll go look that up you should um what's the name of that uh that movie about the guy that had all the split personalities was it called it wasn't called split was it like who, who was in it <laughs> uh um it had who was the star of that one was it the Bruce Willis, Samuel Jackson? Yes, but it was the first one I'm thinking of, but yes. Yeah. Um, unbreakable. That's true. Batman needs the Joker, too, yeah. as we learned in the Lego Batman movie. <laughs> Batman is gay for Joker. He just doesn't want to admit it. Split. It is. Okay. Split. Yes, it was called Split. I didn't think yeah. that was right, but. Yeah, it was called Split. They actually, according to my brother-in-law, who is an RN, almost a doctor, he said they did, on the actual, like, real uh, person that's based off of, they did studies on him, and he was able to do things that technically, physically, most human beings could not do because of his weird, like, psychological issues. So... All superheroes are insane people. All superheroes are insane people. That is that where we're getting at? <laughs> well, I Maybe. mean, some of them have superhuman powers because of, you know, weird things that happen, like radioactive spiders, things like that. But, you know. <laughs> this guy did this fan comic where... Um, because Peter Parker was bitten by a radioactive spider, so his powers are radiation based. And uh, they were like, after years of banging Mary Jane, she ended up with cancer because she's got radiation poisoning from Spider Man's like irradiated spider load. So it was. Oh my gosh. I'm like, what a great take on the concept. <laughs> That's awesome. To be fair. That actually might have been something that really happened. So, I mean, fair enough. He's not wrong. Wow. Yeah, Chuck's like, bingo. Hey, Courtney's here. Hey. Chuck said, yep, the villains are totally sane. It's the heroes who are insane. Yeah, see, that's a whole, it's a whole new way of looking at it. That's true. 
I mean, once you've got a character like Batman that's been around as long as he's been, you start going like, all right, how do you... There's a really interesting... I was listening to it this morning. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of people on here have listened to it, but Kevin Smith used to have a podcast where he would interview creators. And there's this writer, uh, Grant Morrison, um, who's just a brilliant writer. He comes up with the wildest stuff. And he he's written some of what's considered some of the best Batman comics in ever. Mm-hmm. And he has this idea, because if you look at Batman's been around for so long, there's all these different iterations of him. And he's like, he just incorporated them all into like one. He's like, I just come up, he's he's Scottish, so he's got a Scottish accent. So he's like, I incorporated, I can't do the accent. But anyway, he's like. I, I, like, I love that you tried, though. I did, I thought about it. But there's <laughs> pressure because people are listening. But he, you know, like when Batman first started, he was like, Batman was running around with guns and fighting vampires and shit. So he's like, so my idea when Batman started, he was 20 years old, he's got guns he's fighting vampires and then you know when he's 21 22 he meets this little boy you know who becomes robin and in robin he sees the boy that died in himself like the little boy that he should have been here's this bright adventurous kid so that's why he brings on robin and then and then he's even like the adam west series like after fighting joker for years all the chemicals he's like he just started seeing like word balloons in the air and all this weird messed up stuff just like in the, that old tv show so he like integrated all the different variations of batman into like one it's a really interesting take i love that actually i'll have to send a link to you with like a time code on it where he goes on because it's like a four-hour conversation oh wow i mean that that is a cool way of looking at it yeah, he just is like, you know, I'm going to integrate all the stupid shit. And how can I do that? And he come so up with the Which one did he write? Well, he wrote a couple Batman books, a couple series a couple years ago. Um, I just sat wondering if you knew which ones it was that he wrote. I don't know. I'd have to look it up. Yeah, so Courtney's here. Chuck's saying, dude, if you already had superpowers the first time I'm part up for cash, I'm taking down a bank. <laughs> like, for real. Like, I, I, I need money. And I can just do it. That's funny. That's Jump. not, yeah, that's fair. That's fair, though. Now, Batman is a billionaire whose kink is dressing in leather and going out at night to kick the crap out of freaks and criminals. And Chuck's like, yes, which is nuts if you're a billionaire. Oh, to take that wonderful pure idea of I'm going to be, <laughs> I'm going to exact vengeance against criminals so no one has to suffer the pain that I did. And it's like, oh, he's just got a kinky fetish. Like, I get it. <laughs> but um, it's easy to kind of, like, start going off in weird directions with the character. <laughs> yeah, my mom always thought he was super weird. Uh, superheroes were just a weird concept. I mean, if you think of anything in that kind of context, of course it is kind of weird, but I like, it's like, it's a, it's a way to entertain kids, but interject morality stories. And, you know, when you talk about the heroes Mm -hmm. and have people do good things for the right reasons. And I like that idea. Uh, Me too. She also didn't like, like any type of fantasy, like Lord of the Rings or anything. So I mean, her opinion wasn't really ever <laughs> like I'm not credible to me. Um, right. I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, no, you're right. I the idea behind it is is a good one. Chuck saying people with geeky fetishes find ways to justify having them. He tells himself it's the right thing. There you go. <laughs> well, if anybody would know. About Batman. I'm going to take your word for it, Chuck. (laughs) 100%. Yeah, I like Batman, but I don't read many Batman comics. Um, Um, Hey, hold on a second. You're good. Um, Continue on. Jessica's got family shit to attend to.
do to you. <clears throat> Jonathan, I prefer the Punisher's more working class approach. Yeah, I kind of like that. I like how he just ends the criminals. Chuck, I have ideas for Batman they wouldn't let me do. Well, that's why they need to have those like Elseworld tales and stuff like that, where they just let creators come along and at free of continuity, just do some awesome, unbelievably different version. And uh, that's where the really interesting stuff comes from. Sorry about that. <clears throat> Whatever. I'm going to kick you off the live stream for abandoning us. I'm sorry. Just but I completely understand. <laughs> you're, you're so easy to get along. You're like, all right. I deserve it. I, I get it. Should have been like, fuck you, Rob. <laughs> Sometimes. But I try to be nice. Greg King says, wow, nice job. Looks great. So. Thank you, thank you. Lost Illusion, Courtney, drawings are coming on great. Thank you. <laughs> Chuck, that's why I want you to do Batman, man. That's that's the reason it needs to happen. He says, you don't want me writing Batman. I'll drive that shit like I stole it. And it'll come back all fucked up. <laughs> I'm going to use that. That's a great way of putting it. But I'm like, yeah, like they need to have like a, a version where, again, it's just kind of an out of continuity you know, like here, creator, do something different and messed up that drives interest. Like we'll still have our precious, you know, version of Batman that no one can screw up the in continuity one. But, you know, here's an Elseworlds tale version of it and just do something off the wall insane. Who did that? I'm just saying they need to let people do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's been some weird or different. Batman. Yeah. Courtney's like, I mean, I bet it would be great. Like, right? That's That would make me buy a Batman book. I ain't interested in picking up regular Batman comics. I, I really don't, unless the right. artist I'm just in love with. But what, What's wrong with Batman comics? I, I just, it, he's a character I like, but the comics are so deep in the this heavy lore of all these other characters and things. I, I just, I don't want to, I'm not interested in getting involved in it, but I do love the character. So, but again, seeing someone else do different things with the character to do an alternate take, that makes me want to pick it up and look. Fair enough. Courtney says, I've seen things. What have you seen, Courtney? What do you mean by that? <laughs> do I hear screaming children? Uh, yeah, he he wanted he needed batteries for his uh, remote control car. Oh, you know what? It's actually I think it's batteries for the controller for his power wheels. That's why it's so I didn't know what it was. I just needed to know that they were asked me for batteries. <laughs> yeah, Chuck's like, I can hear children being tortured in the background. What's going on at your house there, uh, Jess? Sorry, sorry. Pay no attention to the voices in the background. I promise no one's getting murdered. That I don't know that I can like, promise. You're like, I didn't it's say that. Children, I haven't been down there. <laughs> yeah. That really is, though, like a whole floor away. That's how loud they're being. Courtney's saying, oh, I was saying you can find plenty of interesting interpretations of media on DeviantArt. Yeah, you are not kidding. And by interesting, it's usually like gross, fetish, weird shit that's also kind of interesting. I'm like, all right, that's a weird Probably version. Like, which I love. <laughs> that's why i love you you're like show me some fucked up shit like i dare you i challenge you uh, oh boy you actually do send me some fuck up shit sometimes i'm like i know you'd appreciate this i'm like oh this is messed up you got to see this yeah Rob's like i laughed so hard at this right like what the hell is wrong with you? i'm just kidding no you're you're not wrong to think that 
usually I'm like, oh my gosh, that's terrible, but also hilarious. I got my new issue of that Death of Power comic where it's like an alternate screwed up take of Superman. And um, let me just say in this new one, Lex Luthor fires a giant laser load out into the universe and it spreads out across the planet and it blows up multiple versions of the DC comic superheroes. What? And I'm not joking. <laughs> mm, yeah, it's exactly what it sounds like. Speaking of screwed up shit on DeviantArt. Wow. Wow. I got a giant deep like deviant art scared me as a kid. Seriously, Timothy, yo, what's up? Haven't been able to catch a live stream in a while, so good to good to see you there. Jonathan saying, Rob, Chuck, the discussion of Sesame Street by the way of H.P. Lovecraft last week and the discussion of possible crowdfunder was very inspiring. I have plotted a twenty-four page one shot called Sunflower Lane. That's awesome. Like that concept of like nightmare on Sesame Street. Who will come up with that term? I don't know. I, I can't. I thought maybe it was you or someone else in the the chat. But I'm like, that's actually brilliant. And remember, I did an impersonation <laughs> of Bert. And Ernie. I can take like, credit. For it. No one. I was else. like, hey Bert. Yes, you sound just like. <laughs> hey Bert, somebody got their guts spilled, Bert. <laughs> Jonathan's like, I'm done plotting it. About a quarter of the way through writing the script itself. Would you guys be interested? I should have the first draft finished by next week. What? That's awesome. Oh, yeah. Jonathan's like, I got Death of Power 3 this week pretty well. Uh, as week this well is pretty hilarious. Yeah, it was. Oh, someone said, he's like, that was him. That Okay, that sounds right. Yeah. Um, if we come up with a, if we need to do Nightmare on Sesame Street, you got to give credit where credit's due. Uh, mm. Jonathan, I am so balls deep in like my own thing. I don't have the time to divert on something else. Um, but it like the whole concept sounds interesting. Like I've actually been, I was thinking of ideas of how would we do nightmare on Sesame street or whatever. Like we probably couldn't use the word Sesame street anyway, but, but the whole concept of like, like have a pair of detectives that are called Burton and Arnold or something like that. And, and they're like detectives or something to that effect. Like, I think there's a possibility there. That would be cool. That would be cool. But you're right. I don't know if we could call it that because I'm sure that would be. Yeah, we'd have to come up with something else. <laughs> That's awesome, though. Yeah, the whole concept got me thinking like, oh, there there could be some really interesting messed up ideas. A giant murderous giant pigeon walking around. <laughs> Big yellow pigeon. And Snuffy, he's high all the time. There's a whole Dave Chappelle bit where he's like, Snuffy, that guy's high. Don't tell me Snuffy's not high. Oh, for sure. Yeah. It's like, hi, bird. <laughs> I'm high, bird. <laughs> That's true. That's true. I got to admit, I have not seen a ton of Sesame Street. It was all from when I was a kid, but. I never really watched it as a kid. What? I know. I watched it a little bit, but not too, not too much, to be honest. <clears throat> <laughs> Nookie Monster. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Instead of Cookie Monster, it's Nookie Monster. Instead of craving cookies. <laughs> Gosh. Right? I'm just saying right there. Thank you, Chuck. That's, that's, that's oh literally. My that's literally <laughs> oh. It's in a trap house. <laughs> For some reason, I wanted Oscar to kind of be like the hero of the thing in a way. Cause he's always like the guy getting shit on. Cause he lives in a fucking trash can. Yeah. That's but, true. Uh, I don't know. There's so many possibilities. I love Nookie Monster. Yeah. Chuck's like it almost writes itself. It kind of does. Oh my gosh. There's a, 
There might be a thing there. That's hilarious. You definitely can make something pretty cool out of all that. Definitely <laughs> interesting. People would love it. Maybe. Oh, they would. It's all about marketing it, right? I mean, we are people and we're loving it. Right. So. It almost writes itself. I keep thinking of that. Mr. D-Man, I tell you, man, it's not a part until the D-Man shows up. Huh. Now we can get the party started. We've been waiting to get the party started. Right. It's true. Did you? I think my brain's going to be thinking about this nightmare on Sesame Street thing all night. It'll, mm, it'll, you do need to do it. It'll keep me up. Because then we could do this, and then we could do this. <laughs> the problem is that if we do a Kickstarter and it becomes popular, and then people are like, hey, I come up with that idea, I get a piece, which is fair. <laughs> <laughs> Which is fair. Some of those crowdfunders, those guys make mad cash. But usually it's all like sex book stuff. Wait, what? Like on Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. um, people who seem to make the most money, or it's all like sex book related stuff. Like it's a not safe work version of a superhero. Like this teenage girl is in high school, but she has erotic superhero monster adventures on her downtime. You know, it was like, and no wonder that thing made a hundred thousand dollars because, you know, sex sells. Yep. Yep, it's true. And I ain't too uh, shallow to want to give it a shot. What'd you say? Nothing. I'm sorry. I'm scanning these things. Jonathan, let's see. In the scripts, Oscar is still a hand puppet. The rest of the Muppets are real. There is an interdimensional micro fissure at the bottom of his trash can that an elder god can squeeze a tentacle through. <laughs> oh, my God. Holy God. This is brilliant. Holy shit. Did you just come up with that on the fly, dude? Because <laughs> that was awesome. Holy shit. That's some real, like, out-of-the-box thinking there. Yeah, I love it. That was amazing. <laughs> Holy God. Like, he's the only one who's actually still a puppet. <laughs> God, thank you, John. <laughs> Mr. D-Man says, look at that joker. Yep, yep. Dragon Fub has stumbled in on this live stream by accident, but it's kind of cozy to see um, drawings in the making combined with the chat. And he had to Google Sesame Street, but now I get who they are. Yeah, well, thanks for joining. You know, so <laughs> kind of casually, you know, finds us. You probably know as much as I do about Sesame Street then. Right. <laughs> Chuck saying, yeah, sex sells. Did you know there's a collector out there that commissions big name artists for drawing feet? I, I know, like, what is the foot thing? Like, I do not understand. Like, I'll, I'll see, like, you know. People on the internet, like girls, are like they intentionally don't show their feet because they don't want people to like what steal pictures of their feet and sell them online. I don't know. I don't understand the whole. I didn't know there was that many people who are obsessed with feet, but apparently it's big, big market. It is. It's weird. Yeah, Mar he, you do on those Marvel swimsuit issues, right amount of humor and cheesecake. Now, that's what I thought. I did a whole video on, like, four of those books. And, you know, some people think they're kind of stupid and childish. But I'm like, you know, it, to me, they were just for fun, you know. They're they're being kind of silly about it. And there's some a sense of humor. It gives artists an opportunity to draw some, you know. Pretty women. Pretty women. Or if sometimes you draw a ghost rider at the beach and it's literally just his flaming skeleton on the beach and it's awesome. 
<laughs> that is, I'm not making that up. That was my favorite one out of all of them. Is literally. I don't think I've ever seen that one. I will send you a picture of it. It's in. It's, so there's this Marvel swimsuit issue thing, and it's just a bunch of artists drawing. Yes, yeah, seen them. Be, and uh, Ghost Rider, he's there, and he, he's got his clothes off, so it's just a skeleton. Oh my gosh. Like lying awesome. on the beach in flames, just loving life. And I'm like, this is the most brilliant piece of artwork. Like if I could own Who that. Did I would that one. That's so smart. That's so smart. <laughs> the, Timothy says Nickelodeon was built on feet. I don't know what that means, but I need to know what that means. Jonathan, those old swimsuit specials are goofy fun. Courtney's throwback to when my sister and her friends made anklets and posted a pic of them. They were 11 and a bunch of creeps commented on their feet. Yeah, that's the thing with especially girls online if, if you're young. Uh, yeah, that actually one of my um, friends, she would go in um, to the thrift store looking for kind of old school tennis shoes. And she and one of her other friends were in there and she said she was just, there was this like creepy dude, like kind of just hanging around the shoe section and she's like a good looking girl. And she's also like pretty tiny, like she's shorter and like really petite. And she was, she had found another pair of shoes and she's like, Oh, this will be great. And he like came around the corner and he goes, I'll buy your old ones from you. Oh my God. He was like, what? Why? He's like, just, just cause like, I'll, I'll take them from you off your hands. How much do you want for them? Oh my God. I'd be like $300. She's like, they're not for sale, you know, whatever. And he was like, uh, he's like, I'm willing to pay. He was like getting his checkbook out. He's like, I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you a lot for it. He's like, I mean, I'm not going to stiff you. She's like, what? He's like, what the heck? She said it was so weird. That's, and I'd be like, somebody wants to pay me for pictures of my feet. Fuck yeah, you can have all you want. Pay me <laughs> feet. I don't give a fuck. Um, Chuck says some of his first work was done on swimsuit issue pages. I wonder if I've got some of those, Chuck. Do you remember which one they were? I think uh, Jonathan's asking, um, what was it? Because I think I've got some of the Wildstorm ones. Maybe. Now I gotta go look. <laughs> Jai Deep says, "Rob, when will we get a Masters End swimsuit special?" Oh my God, that might need to be a thing. You, yeah, you would have so much fun doing that too. Well, and then I could like get other people who want to join in. Like, hey, anybody who wants, yep. to, let's let's make a little, you know, print up a little <laughs> Masters End swim. That's actually a brilliant idea. I should actually do that. Yeah, that's a great idea. Like, yeah, let's draw He-Man in a thong. I mean, he runs around in a fur diaper. Oh, I'm like a fresh. Someone please do that one. I will buy it. <laughs> like, I will. I want that commission. That's a good idea, though. Yeah, it is. Super good idea. Did this game guy's name start with Quentin, like Quentin Tarantino? Because he's got a weird foot fetish, I think. Oh, Chuck saying his stuff was at Wildstorm. They did a lot of source books. Yep, I remember those. Pinups were his bread and butter back then. Makes sense. I might have to jump off here. I can hear my baby screaming down there. She doesn't want her dad. Oh, like your little baby? Yeah, the tiny one. Oh. Can hear her. She's definitely making her anger known. <laughs> well, you have to, I'd be curious. Like, if you go down there and you pick her right up, if she instantly like quiets down, like boop, boop, done. I'll have to let you know. <laughs> like, as a dad, I'd I'd be kind of hurt. I'm like, oh, why isn't my damn baby like comfortable with me? That's fucked up. <laughs> uh, she might be hungry though, and I don't have any bottles for her. So yeah. <clears throat> He can't do much about that. <laughs> Chuck, more. trade cards are even more. Cards paid almost the same rate as full page. Oh, wow, though. Yeah. Jonathan, Chuck, I have a long box full of that stuff, especially Wildcats, Wet Works, Gen 13 related. Yeah, I think a lot of us did. 
I think I've got a lot of stuff buried out in all my 12 long boxes. But it's a little cold to go digging through those things right now. <laughs> Dragon Fub says, fur diaper. I'll never think of He-Man the same again. Yeah, I was just reading that. <laughs> I mean, it's what he's wearing. He, he's the only character, because a lot of the He-Man characters wore that stuff. And in my stupid fan comic, like I eliminated him off everyone that I could except he man. Like, all right, he's got to keep the fur diaper, but like Fisto, like I changed his outfit around. I can't have him running around with bare legs and a fur diaper and have his name be Fisto. So, oh my I, god, yeah, well, it looks good. You're definitely I really like this page that you're working on right now. Yeah, I was having a lot of fun with it, drawing it. And uh, like I said, I had some other stuff I wanted to do, but uh, I'm like, ah, I got to I gotta work on this thing. I got to get, get this thing going. Yeah, I've got, I actually do have several things that I still not finished that I should have had finished months ago that people have asked me to do. And I'm just, I just could not do it. I was pregnant and now I've got to kick it in the ass and get it done. For sure. Courtney's like, Dan Schneider definitely had a thing for feet. I don't even know who that is. Um, uh, wasn't Dan Schneider? Wasn't he like a news reporter or no? Am I thinking of somebody else? Yeah, I don't know. I think it I think he was. <laughs> Yeah, Jonathan, that he recognized Chuck when he showed up in the comments. Richard Friend is on YouTube. Yeah, I like Richard Friend, another inker. Um, well, I mean, I shouldn't just call him an inker because he does artwork outside of just inking over people. But yeah, Chuck's like, he knows Richard Friend, nice guy. He's a great artist. I can't wait for Richard Friend to do this Blaster Kid book that he's working on because the artwork that he's been posting on that thing that he's been doing is just incredible his control of the ink line that he does because he does everything physical like analog handheld tools and holy god the work that he does is shockingly good as far as i'm concerned i'm sorry i'm gonna have to jump off here all righty understood screaming brand new baby kind of tends to trump everything so yeah, I know. I'm like, uh, she was so good the last time. She lasted so long, but yeah, I mean, we got an hour and you know, almost a half. So, can't yeah. true, true. Obviously, I'm just gonna jump off, and you can keep going as well. But I have your permission to keep going. Well, I'm just saying, if you hadn't thought about that, you could do that, but. <laughs> I like having your permission. Okay. Wow. Well, Jess, thanks for joining. Um, yes, and thanks everybody who came and chit-chatted. Appreciate it. It was fun. Art looks great. I'm excited to see it finished. We'll probably be doing this again next week. Yeah, as far as I know. I don't have any yeah barring any end of the world things we we kind of tentatively plan just to do this all the time unless something crazy happening that's what i was gonna say my husband was like why don't you guys do it twice a week why do you only do one day i'm like eh, i don't know it's kind of our thing live at five on thursday but honestly we could especially since i can't always be on for as long but i can usually get like an hour to an hour and a half of time see chuck saying it won't be the same without you jesse that's what i say people are here to Aww. You're more interesting than me by far, so. Thanks, guys. I appreciate that, Chuck. <laughs> you too, Jonathan. Bye, JD. All right. See you next time, Jess. All right. Sounds good. See you guys. Boom. Now you're just stuck with me for a minute. I can hang on for another little bit. Yeah.
Yeah, I'm not going to jump off immediately, but I got to get dinner here shortly, so it's not going to be too much longer. And I can't sit here and be inking in front of Chuck Gibson, who's a professional guy, and I know that he's watching me. I'm like, oh, God. He's probably laughing at everything I do. <laughs> Just kidding, guys. <laughs> Yeah, I'll hang on for a little bit there. Someone saying. <laughs> JD, Rob, you're not as boring as you perceive yourself to be. I mean, you know, I'm I'm being a little bit like overly dramatic, but still, I mean, I grew up a shy, nerdy, dork-ass kid who always felt like he was um, just a loser by every other standard. So there's a little bit, even as an adult, I, uh, you know, um, it's kind of hard to shake it a little bit. So it's just a little bit of self-depreciating humor, but thank you. I appreciate that. Um, Chuck, I've seen way worse. <laughs> I appreciate that. <clears throat> Yeah, I do want to bring John onto here. I, I keep trying to get him. He's got a one-year-old baby, so kind of like Jess. He, uh, you know, it's kind of hard to find the time, but um, I do need to do that. I'm going to hit him up. I mean, he was on here for a minute. I'll have to see if I can't find a time. I, yeah, me and John, my brother, we tend to, I don't know, bounce off each other pretty well. Um. Sorry, the guy with the name I can't pronounce because it's not in English. He says, how do you think about the opinion that Rob Liefeld is a Kurt Cobain of the comic book world? I guess that depends on your interpretation of what that means because Kurt Cobain made good music and music that has stand, stood the test of time. It wasn't just a flash in the pan one moment where he was good and then, I mean, there was a little bit of a flash in his brain pan. But... Um, I mean, Cobain wrote music and was legitimately talented. And I guess you could kind of say that about Liefeld, if that's the kind of context you want to put it in. But I don't know. The work struggles to hold up to scrutiny, in my opinion, for Liefeld, as compared to Kurt Cobain that made great music. But he did influence a generation, both of them, Cobain and Liefeld. There's no denying that. Courtney, your favorite was me and John's drunk Deadpool review. We were just a couple of drunk and dumbass losers, especially me. It's embarrassing when I go back and listen to it, but I ain't taking it down. I'm not going to be a hypocrite. That shit's staying up there. And I swore never again, but, you know, never say never. I need something good to do a drunken review on, so somebody give me some... It, like what would be a good thing to get my ass all drunk on and uh, talk about. Mark saying not everyone is going to have a bunch of good ideas. Rob had some good ideas. I agree. Like he took like that train, the X-Men train was running and he grabbed onto some of the ideas and ran in his own direction. And it clearly connected with a lot of people. I still enjoy those kind of basic stories. <laughs> D-Man says life has inspired a generation of bad artists. Yeah. I mean, Yeah. You know, Chuck, what I like about your um, digital inking, because like I said, when I got that final file of that drawing you did and I looked at uh, up close, um, is that the lines, when you zoom in on them, have like a rough look to them. It's not just this perfect digital flat, hard black line. It has like a rough, sketchy look to it when you get up close to it. So it kind of mimics in my opinion, I don't know anything about how digital works, but it mimics like what a real tool would do. Cause like, 
you know, when you're doing things by hand like this, it may look like a solid line, but if you zoom in way close in it, you can see the rough lines on it. So I was noticing that, um, Chuck, when I was zooming in on the artwork you sent me, I was like, I like how these lines have a rough kind of scratchy look to them up close, but zoomed out, it works. Um, Chuck's saying life does problems and he got big success too soon in his career. I think that's exactly correct. Because you get that good and you think all your crappy work is exactly how it needs to be done because everyone's buying it. So why would you grow and learn and change? <clears throat> A drunken movie review of Rocketeer. I love that movie so much. We just probably sit around saying really inappropriate things about Jennifer Connelly in probably the most beautiful role she's ever been in, ever. And that alone might make it worth doing. D-Man, you said Linkara used to be cool. I've tried watching some of his videos. Like you've mentioned him, D-Man, and they were kind of entertaining, but I don't know. It didn't hold my attention for very long. <laughs> yeah, Mark, it's such a great movie. Yeah. Um, Courtney suggests a drunken Marvel review of any new Marvel or DC film. Well, the thing is that my brother John's a little bit more forgiving of the current Marvel stuff, and I kind of don't like almost any of them. So, and that again might be the reason to do it because we'll end up fighting. Like, no, you dumb shit. It sucks because of this. He's like, no, you dumb shit. You should lighten up. And then we get political, and then we'd go to blows. Chuck saying, I try to work digitally as much as I can, like the same thing as working analog. I do some things differently, but try to keep it as basic as possible. I mean, I, that's what I like. I like that kind of look, you know. There's one thing I don't like is when it looks so overwhelmingly digital. Like, it's like you, you look at it instantly. You're like, oh, well, that's clearly like fake digital. Um, and your stuff has a real handheld, like analog look to it. And I, I was like, all right, that I like, that works. <clears throat> Cordy says, I heard the new Aqu Aquaman is rough. Yeah, I heard that. <laughs> Jessica had to chime in. What's taking you so long on these inks? Jessica. I was busy talking to you. Yeah, Mark says, Jennifer Connelly looks like such a golden age Scarlet. That movie, she looked perfect, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, not to put too fine a point on it. The thing is, she's crazy hot today, and she's in her 50s, too. <clears throat> Yeah, Chuck, if you were to sit down and put a Hunt 102 in your hand again and try to do it like old school, do you think it would take a minute to, you know, get that feel back? Or do you think you could, uh, you think you'd fall back into it kind of easy? <sighs> where to go? Where to go? <clears throat> Link Carr is a diehard DC fan and Rob's a diehard Marvel fan. Yeah, I'm definitely not much of a... I mean, I, I like DC, but it's just I, their books don't capture my interest that much. That's a good point, uh, Jonathan. Someone who buys digital artwork, a little surprised to me that pencilers and inkers have had digital workflow now. Does the technological advantage really outweigh the additional income stream? That's a good point, you know. Um, J. 
Jessica. She wanted so badly to grow up to look like Jennifer Conley when you were a kid. I mean, well, let's put it this way, Jessica. You're a lot closer than most of us in this stream right now. Chuck, if you got a decent pen point, the right ink and paper that didn't suck, give me half an hour to warm up and I'm good. That's awesome. I would I, I'd love to see, like, I love to go watch on, on online and there's some Scott Williams inking videos and um, Jonathan Galapian doing some ink work over Capullo. And it's just amazing to watch those guys, you know, get the control out of their brush or pen. Joe Weems, see what he does. Just to see that ink flow out of their pens. I'm like, good God, it's almost inhuman, the control that they have. It's, it's really neat. Uh, v, he asked, how old are you, Rob? Just curious as to where your headspace was during the peak of the Xbox, late 80s, early 90s. Your channels hit me with a lot of nostalgia feel. So I was born in 1977. So, um, so I was kind of right at the perfect time as a young, early teenager to be right there at the peak of image, to just be blown away by it all. I graduated high school in 95. So yeah, that whole stuff, all that stuff, especially the image stuff at the time was just like, this is where it's at. Mark, you're 77. But that, see, there we go. We're all kind of in the same area. That's interesting. Chuck saying you do the, the big awesome pages basically by hand, the ones that collectors would want. And then the, the everyday pages were probably just a bunch of talking heads. Uh, no one buys that shit anyway. <laughs> it's good sense. It makes sense. Uh, Mr. D-Man, you said, um, uh, Linkara coined the phrase young blood's disease. I've heard you say that before. And it's funny. It's hilarious, dude. <clears throat> Chuck, you're saying I'm three years older than your wife. You're a, uh, you're, you're, you're a little older than me, too, Chuck, by a couple of years. So you've got the, all that experience. V is saying, same, same, 75. Silvestri sucked me into X Men. Yeah, Silvestri could suck me into anything, and I'll be there for it. I'm not going to lie. Almost anything, especially back in the day. His old work. <clears throat> Jonathan, 78. Courtney, 97. I know, you're so young, Courtney. Jessica, 77. Same age as Star Wars. Yeah, I know. I was born the same year as Star Wars. That was when Star Wars was good. Mark saying one of your biggest errors was trading away your amazing Spider-Man 300. Oh, damn. I've never traded comics, though. That never ever come up. When I bought it, I wanted it. It was mine. Even if I didn't like it, I'm like, this shit's mine. No one else is getting this. But of course, never, never no one ever else came up to me and was like, hey, I've got a comic and do you want it? I'll trade it for that. So I don't know. It just never come up. <clears throat> Mark, I was a dumb kid. I had no idea what the concept of key issues were, right? D-Man from the 70s, 1970. Sylvester even got me to read every issue of that boring 2012 reboot, reboot of Cyberforce because of his artwork. Yeah, that's the problem. Because he'd like do conceptual sketches and covers and stuff like that. And then the guys who drew the inside were like talented fellas, but it's not Sylvester. And it's just like this, just there's nothing interesting here anymore. It's so hard to find an artist that I'm interested in. Um, So someone's saying, you're 77 too, huh? You're the same age. Um, Demon, comics ain't baseball cards. I don't trade. That's, I mean, yeah, I, I buy my comics. I want my comics. That's why I've got 15 long boxes. <laughs> Just stacked full of nonsense. Stuff I even forgot that I had. 
Chuck says, when I met Mark Sylvester, he was driving a Dodge Viper and dating a woman that looked like a young Gina Davis. I've seen that blonde girl that he, I, I presume he's still married to. Um, she looked like one of his drawings, which is pretty awesome. If you, if you know what I'm saying, it's pretty awesome. Timothy, uh, 78. So yeah, we're all kind of in the same area there, except for Courtney, the young buck from 1997. But you know what, Courtney, you are hundred percent part of this group. You're just the child of the group. Jonathan, I mean, Sylvester was the most conventionally attractive of the image founders. Oh, Chuck is saying different. So, okay. So, yeah. So maybe it wasn't the same one I've seen pictures of, but um, uh, Jonathan Sylvester is the most conventionally attractive of the image founders. Yeah, I think you're right about that. Um, yeah, I'm just kind of going through them in my head. Yeah, you're you're not wrong about that. I think the most second most conventionally attractive was clearly Jim Valentino. Dragon Fub. So this is the 70s corner on YouTube. 79. Yep, yeah, most of us. Yep. <laughs> that's, that's right. But what a good time to kind of like get a chance to start reading comics. Like you get the opportunity to catch a lot of the older stuff and be part of the newer stuff. Sylvester is what modern people would call it, Chad. <laughs> Mark Sylvester co-created Jubilee, my POV young X-Men member. Always liked him for that. I kind of liked Jubilee when she first started out. I don't feel like... I never really liked the character that much. Sylvester gave you drawing advice I still think of today. Can you kind of summarize any of that, Chuck? Just curious. I mean, I know it might be hard to be like, you know, it's this, that, this, that, this, that. But was it like, this is how you draw a certain thing? I'm curious as what that would be. I heard, if I remember correctly, Sylvester say on an interview one time, or maybe he's like in a magazine, he said something that was important to me. Um. Chuck says it costs you money to give up that advice, <laughs> right? That's fair, dude. Um, one of the things I saw Silvestri say is that artists need to understand that every panel on a page doesn't need to be a masterpiece. And that stuck out to me. It's like everything on the page doesn't have to be the most perfect drawing ever. It just kind of needs to convey the story and move you through the the, the story. And I thought that was really interesting idea because i've seen people like just get stuck on a tiny little panel because it's not perfect and i guess if you're trying to get a job you would do it then but when you're doing the actual gig as if i have any knowledge i don't do this shit but i kind of get the concept that not every little thing has to be flawless and if you look at sylvester's work especially his older stuff you can see he learned a way to like artistically cut corners and still keep the page artistically interesting yeah, uh, Jonathan says Sylvester is one of my favorites ever. Whenever he puts effort in, he gets to borderline rights and Frankenstein level of cross-assing genius. I agree. Like when Sylvester really puts in the effort, like he's amazing, but he has a tendency to like slack. <laughs> like speaking of Sylvester, I've been flipping through this. I've showed this a couple of times, but um, I've got this. Uh, it's like it, Marvel Essentials, and I keep this right next to my desk at all times. And just seeing, yeah, like like V, he's saying his art on X Men was sometimes sketchy, but he always has great framing and dynamism. Like that's the thing. That's what I like. I like this sketchy look. This. I, I can't explain like this random kind of technological and torn garments on her arm here. Dan Green's ink is just something about this just works so perfectly. Yeah. I love having these black and white books because again, all I ever do is draw in black and white. So that's all I'm looking at all the time. So I like to see artists work like, don't get me wrong. I love color, but I just, 
to be able to see it in this level, it, it is what inspires me. Comic art not ruined by color, right, Jonathan? Yeah, the DC unwrapped books are great too. I've heard about those. I uh, I've wanted to pick up a couple of those. I'm curious, Chuck, is it as an inker? I mean, do you look at these Dan Green inks and like you can just see these like thick kind of brush strokes kind of like it almost looks like through here it's like it's like it's like it's done quickly and I'm not saying that as a negative, but as an inker, do you see that and do you kind of what do you think of a guy who's like like Dan Green's inks on this stuff? It's it looks like it's done fast to get books out, but it somehow it just comes out so perfectly. Um, it's got that it it matches that rough, sketchy artwork of Silvestri. Like this panel right here, that's one of my favorite drawings ever that Silvestri did of Wolverine. It's so freaking awesome. Holy crap, that looks good. <clears throat> I wish they would have, Will saying you wish they would have published all of Joel Mad's Ultimates, like in black and white. I Somebody said there's a, a collection of all his pencils. I wanted to see inked. So that's the thing with me, but I'm probably going to go look up that uh, penciled uh, penciled collection. I'm, I was told, somebody from on the channel said, <clears throat> Chuck, you saying you love Dan Green's inks on that stuff. He did a great job on Andy Kubert over on Captain America. Yeah. I've said this before, I would just die to be able to see what Silvestri's pencils looked like before Dan Green got them. Like, how rough were they? You know, how much interpretation did he have to do? Like, this panel right here. <coughs> Excuse me, holy shit. <coughs> But like you got a character in a graveyard and to kind of give it this atmospheric look, it's like he just draws in like the top of these gravestones and, you know, composes the image, but then just has everything kind of fade out. You know, it's a way to kind of give it an atmospheric look, that moon in the background with the tree. It's kind of simple, but it's perfect. I love this so much. Oh, Chuck, don't tell me you have copies of Cyberforce pencils, dude. Because I'm gonna have to start like begging you to like let me see see these things. I would just die. I'd love to see these penciled images. Yeah. Like even this is a cover, this hand, this thick brush inking, and then this kind of rough, probably dry brush, I'm guessing, on the clouds in the background. Yeah, uh, I was. I've actually thought that uh, Chuck saying like the graveyard thing is the Mignola thing. I've actually felt a lot of that kind of. I, I, I've 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 seen a lot of things in a lot of this work that makes me think like there's a Mignola kind of vibe to it, but especially that graveyard thing. But it it works, you know. Um, it's just inspiring. It's like I look at this stuff. I'm like, holy shit! I want to go draw comics. Yeah, Mark's Wolver and X-Men stuff was heavily influenced. And I prefer that. I prefer it when he threw in heavy shadows like this. Um, once he got over to, you know, doing image comics and by his own admission, he said that he started doing Jim Lee stuff because that's the stuff that was selling and that's what everyone liked. But this heavier shadowed stuff, I just think it, he's so good at knowing form. Just stick with this. And even doing these cartoony faces. Like that goofy looking guy right there, that skinny face or big fat guy there. His stuff looks so good. Like I can't cartoon like that at all. That exaggeration of the face. I, I have no ability to do that. <clears throat> Uh, 
Like, I feel like there's kind of a Mignola vibe in this drawing here with like the rubble and debris in the background and the, the characters kind of got the line work fading out and then this awesome heavily shadowed figure up front and then rubble and rocks on the ground. Like I try to draw like this all the time and I'm probably doing a poor man's like douchebag version of it. it it's so good. I'm just trying to learn. I want to be able to draw things like this. <clears throat> Sean Franklin joining in saying, hi, how's it going? Yeah, Chuck, uh, Mark's main influences are Busima, Mignola, and Wrightson. That's what a great bunch of artists to pull from. Like, Yeah, Will, you're a fan of most Busima disciples. Have I read Freddy versus Jason versus Ash comic book? No, I remember hearing something about that, but I never have, but it sounds amazing. I mean, I, I would hope that it would be as over the top ridiculous as the concept sounds like. <clears throat> this is one of my favorite backgrounds that Silvestri's ever done. That atmospheric rain in the backgrounds, the skyscrapers faded out and then all these signs these circles for lights and then the rain and water on the ground that little squiggly lines to make that water reflection it's so damn good and then even these shadows on these cops in the car <clears throat> jonathan saying my favorite thing about comic art is seeing how different artists boil three dimensions full color and a sense of time into a series of black and white static images it's really remarkable yeah for real i agree just sit here and flip through this Silvestri stuff forever i think i actually need to jump off here myself um I got a couple things to do before bedtime crops up. You know what's wild in this book, for those of you who haven't seen this randomly, there's a whole issue of Larry Stroman in here. And man, is he just got the weirdest and most awesome, ridiculous kind of wild style. I mean, Stroman's Wolverine is something to behold here. This is... This is some weird stuff, but I like it. Well, all right, Chuck. Yeah, I'm going to get going too. Thanks for stopping in, Chuck, and everybody else for uh, chiming in and talking. Um, it's always fun. We appreciate it a lot. D-Man, my Batman would get raped in prison. Well, now we know what's on Zack Snyder's mind. I've never heard that. That's messed up. <laughs> it's hilarious, though. <laughs> wow. But yeah, guys, I'm going to jump off here, too. I appreciate everyone stopping in, as always. Um, it's always a lot of fun. So thank you very, very much, everybody. Yep, Courtney, Gaten, Will. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you. Bye.